President, earlier this week, myself, Senator Cassidy, and Senator Cornyn, along with 35 of our Republican colleagues, introduced an effort to block President Biden's plan to transfer student loan debt onto the backs of hardworking Americans. This includes ending the pause on student loan payments, which has been extended six times since the start of the pandemic. What might seem like a free pass in making payments on student loans is actually a scheme orchestrated by the Biden administration that could cost taxpayers an estimated $900 billion. Let's break it down. $400 billion to cancel student loan debt. $195 billion to pause loan payments and interest accrued during the pandemic. And $200 billion to implement President Biden's loan repayment rule. Folks, $900 billion is more than the federal government has ever spent on higher education in our nation's history. To give you some additional perspective, this radical proposal costs, get this folks, three times more than what the government will spend on Pell Grants in this decade. In this decade. A program designed to help our neediest students. Mr. President, this is not debt cancellation, it's socialism. President Biden is rewarding those who chose the path of higher education by strapping their debt onto the backs of those who did not. This is a personal issue to me. My brother chose to enter the workforce directly out of high school. My brother is a hard-working union laborer. Oh, wow, friends. I have important news to share with you this Thursday. There are major changes to Medicare and SNAP benefits that may go into effect this year. President Biden has also unveiled his new plan that may ease health expenses for millions of Americans, even as inflation continues to rise. SNAP beneficiaries may also see a boost very soon. Friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, this coming Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dear friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Medicare is a main source of health insurance coverage for 65 million Americans and a major source of revenue for hospitals, other health care providers, and health insurers that offer Medicare Advantage plans. Over the years, policymakers have debated major changes to Medicare, driven by concerns about solvency, sustainability, and affordability, which are propelled by an aging population and system-wide increases in healthcare spending, as well as a program's contributions to federal budget deficits and debt. President Biden is currently proposing a tax increase for individuals who make more than $400,000 a year to extend Medicare solvency for another 25 years. Biden has proposed allowing Medicare to negotiate prices for more types of prescriptions and using the savings from that to preserve the program. The Inflation Reduction Act that Biden signed last year allowed the program to negotiate prices for some prescriptions. President Biden wrote in an official statement, lowering prescription prices 
while extending Medicare solvency, makes a lot more sense than cutting benefits. These are common sense changes that I'm confident an overwhelming majority of Americans will support. Discussions about Medicare cuts are heating up, partly based on two announcements by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services related to Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage is a private plan, alternative to traditional Medicare, that now provides Medicare coverage to about half of Medicare beneficiaries. The federal government pays private insurers a capitated payment to provide Medicare covered services to enrollees based on a formula set by statute. Last week, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services finalized a rule making changes to how Medicare Advantage Risk Adjustment Data Validation Audits are conducted. Risk adjustment is a method that seeks to predict a person's likely use and cost of health care services. It is used to Medicare Advantage to adjust the capitated payments that the federal government makes to cover expected medical costs of enrollees. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services estimates that it will collect $4.5 billion over the next decade by applying new changes to the plans. But many people do not agree with these changes. According to new data, during the crisis, health care costs remained surprisingly stable, rising just about 2% annually, even as prices for many goods and services had soared more than three or four times that rate. But signs are emerging that medical inflation is back as demand for non-crisis-related health services recovers and health care providers seek to make up for soaring labor costs and losses during the crisis. Prices for hospital services, the single biggest component of medical care, accelerated in December and even faster in January to an annual rate of 5.5%. It is clear that inflation is continuing to affect millions of Americans nationwide. Rising inflation has led some lawmakers to establish new ways for Americans to receive more financial aid. According to CNN News, food banks and food programs help millions of Americans find food and groceries in their communities every day. Since the crisis started in 2020, SNAP recipients have been receiving an additional payment in the second half of the month, known as an emergency allotment. The emergency allotment ended at the end of February, and starting this month, SNAP recipients are now only receiving their one regular payment. Currently, the Commodity Supplemental Food Program provides food assistance for low-income seniors with a monthly package of healthy USDA commodities. There is also the Child and Adult Care Food Program, which provides nutritious meals and snacks to children and adults in designated child and adult care centers. On a state level, Governor Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania is proposing a $16 million investment to increase the minimum SNAP benefit amount by 50%, with the understanding that every dollar counts when it comes to ensuring someone's access to nutritious, healthy foods. The state of Oregon has already passed legislation. Over the next few weeks, the Oregon Department of Human Services will issue $391 in food benefits to each eligible child in the state of Oregon. Well, my awesome and most amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Thursday. Thank you, dear friends, for being part of this community and for being here every single day. To show my appreciation, I will be announcing several winners this Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My friends, the more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.